Ashton. Okay, thank you everybody. I'm now going to introduce Luana. I am the founder of Get Online, Get Found, Get Clients, and basically we are going to talk about how you can transform your website into the best salesperson that you could possibly have. One that works for you 24-7 so that you basically don't have to. Okay. It used to be quite difficult to actually get online, but these days it's really so much easier. Technology has come on in leaps and bounds, so um, if you can point and click and drag and drop, you can do a tremendous amount for yourself. And if even that is beyond you, then you can always contact someone. But you need to be in control of what you do on your website because it is the online version of your offline business. Um, and I'm sure pretty much everyone has done some shopping online. Anyone not shopped online? Anyone not uploaded for, uh, photos to Facebook? Then you can do it. It's as simple as that. If you're going to give yourself an edge in a crowded marketplace, you really have to do something different. So if you can combine the best of online with offline, then you are setting yourself up for success. And you'll stay ahead of the game by leveraging the power of the internet. You can't ignore it anymore. Even the people who say they hate technology, they won't be left behind. It'll be the difference between having a bicycle and a car. Um, you might get there, but you'll get there a long time after everyone else and the party's over. So you're going to continuously upgrade your skills and specialize. And I think specializing is also very, very important. But if we're going to create a great salesperson, we should probably agree on what a great salesperson actually is. So here are some of the things that I personally like. Funnily enough, I'll use an example of John Lewis as well, even though I'm also not on commission, <laughs> but should be, because um, you want someone who will go the extra mile and provide great customer service. And you want someone who is knowledgeable, who's confident, and honest, friendly, helpful, trustworthy, and put the needs of the client first, beyond everything else. Um, with John Lewis, I remember going in to buy something and they actually sold me something that was less expensive than the thing I wanted because it suited my needs more. And I think if you can take that attitude onto your website and make the needs of the customer the most important thing, then you'll be going a long way to get away from the whole issue of selling for the sake of selling. You'll feel a lot more comfortable about what you're doing if you really base everything from the needs of the people you serve. So can what I'm going to tell you work in your business? Um, you'd have to say yes, it will work for any business because every single business has the possibility to add another level of service or support and an additional stream of income somehow. It's different for every business and if you sell products it can be different but you can still do it. The internet will work for absolutely everyone. And I think that's the whole point is you're meant to use the, your website to actually help you create multiple streams of income. So for instance if you do as Chris has recommended and you actually publish a book it can have pride of place on your website and, and do a lot more good for you than some advertising. So you probably know or have heard that there are 50 ways to leave your lover, yes? But there's actually only three ways that you can grow your business. Anyone like to shout out one of them? Oh, I was too quick. <laughs> Another one? If you get more clients, what else can you do? Put the prices up. Like okay. <laughs> and the last one? Or what? Because there are actually only three. Everything else falls under these headers. Anything? Sorry? Actually, it, it would fall under there, but it is is actually to give customers and clients a reason to buy from you more often so that they can continue to buy from you. Um, so the first one, sourcing more clients, uh, new clients, is the hardest and the most cost effective. The second one, to charge more. That's pretty good, you can put your fees up if you increase your value, but of course if you've only got one thing to sell when it's sold, you're back to square one and you have to look for more clients. Um, but the third one, if you actually give clients a reason to buy from you more often, that's the beauty. Nice recurring income, which can also become passive if you work it in uh, with the rest of what you do. Um, if you can create different packages, then your satisfied clients will actually stay with you longer. And that's the idea at the end of it all. Now, if you get 10% more clients, you obviously increase your business by 10%. If you do that and 
have 10% more, um, your fees increased by 10%, then you, you would think that you would just increase by 20%. And likewise, if you had 10% more of your clients buy from you more often, you might think that that would be a 30% increase in your business overall. But the whole thing with compound interest actually means that you almost double your business just by increasing each of those things by 10%. So it is relatively easy to just to get 10% more new clients, 10% increase in fees, and then add something to your package. Um, you actually get a really nice big difference. Now, if you do all three, basically you can almost double your business. It's not exact. Um, it's, it's near enough and you wouldn't mind it at all. And your website can definitely help you make that happen because you've got control over it. You can add and take away things as you see fit. Now, Graham might argue with these stats, but I did take off the internet that there are roughly 3.3 plus million businesses in the UK at the moment, okay? Now, the neat little um, groups that I've put them in, that is definitely my creation, but it just makes it easier for the slide. You, let's say you have 1.1 million small business, micro business, and uh, big businesses. You can guarantee that within each of those groups, there are literally thousands of people We've got problems and they would be problems that you actually know how to solve now just by show of hands how many people here have um, up to five years experience doing what they're doing keep them up if you have 10 15 20 okay so there's a lot of experience so what do you think that experience and knowledge would actually be worth if you condensed it into a package would you say that you could combine what you know into something that you could sell that would be worth, uh, we'll start now, we'll say 100 pounds. Yes? Hands? Because if, if you can't sell anything worth 100 pounds, you probably shouldn't be here at all. <laughs> 500? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And 1,000. I think, I, honestly, if you've got uh, any length of experience, putting something into a package that you could offer value, whether it's over three visits or a six month pa um, coaching service, a thousand pounds is very, very achievable. And right now, there would be at least a hundred people in the UK somewhere who've got a thousand pounds to spend and they basically are looking for somebody that they feel can actually help them. Um, they're looking for somebody that they would feel like they know, like and trust, which is what Danny's been talking about with PR. So again, your website, if you use it properly, is going to actually help them connect with you when they find you. Um, and let's say, you, you're over this side, and you've actually got the experience, you've got the knowledge, you've got your own particular personality, your own set of skills, that will combine together to uh, provide a very unique service. So it doesn't matter if there are uh, 10 people providing the same service, whether there are 10 trainers, if you use your website to um, portray your own personality and deliver your skills in your own special way, you don't really compete because you are providing it in a different manner and you'll always find people who will connect with you in a different way to someone else. So it's, it's perfectly possible to succeed in a, an industry. Okay, then there's a problem. Oh, there's, there's actually three problems. The first one is that the majority of business owners actually hate to sell. Um, and then, as Danny mentioned, most people hate to be sold to. Nobody wants to feel that they're being manipulated. Then the other problem is that service providers try to be too many things to everybody. They don't specialize. They want to serve everybody. They don't pick a particular area, and so they are forever looking for everyone. But the problem is when you're looking for everyone or anyone, they're pretty much everywhere. And so you dilute your efforts in trying to find them and spend an awful lot of time chasing after this client, change to that client. And you don't come across with a single focused message uh, and brand on your website. So the solution, first of all, is to stop selling. If you think of it more as helping, if you put your heart into what you're doing and you believe in what you're doing, then you genuinely believe that you can solve a problem for someone. It's not necessary to sell. It's simply necessary to show that you can help them. And you normally would do that by actually helping. And you do that by producing articles, blogs, uh, providing value, and directing it back to your website. 
And the other thing you can do is to create the best salesperson that you've ever had, um, which is your website. <laughs> now, I don't know how many people have um, what you say, role models in the business world who they the first names that come up when you think of a successful business person. Anyone? Richard Branson. Richard Branson. He's very often quoted. Anyone else? No. Alan Sugar. Oh, Alan Sugar. Okay. Here's mine. Here's one of them. Bruce Lee. <laughs> <laughs> and here's another. Do you recognise Mr. Flatley? Yes. Now, they're not conventional people. Mm. That's one of the reasons why I like them anyway. But the whole point is, there was a time when Bruce Lee would have been one of a lineup, one of many practicing his skills, doing it just like everybody else did it, and doing quite well. But there would have come a time when he would have had to have stopped and been willing to make a stand for something, step outside the box, and actually what he did was he combined a whole load of different disciplines and packaged it into one completely different, unique offer. Um, so there were still plenty of people out there that were competing at different levels, doing different things, but he stood out. And of course, we all know the story with uh, Mr. Flatley. He took the best of Hollywood and uh, the, the best of Irish dancing and turned it into something altogether different and then took the show completely on the road. But that is the whole thing again in your delivery and your website. You need to take a stand for something and you need to blend the best of what it is you know into one offer. Um, and this is the whole thing with focusing. Be willing to specialise because it is the specialists that actually get paid the most money. Generalists do not. Um, so it doesn't mean that you can't work with anyone else. It just means that that is where your primary focus would be. And, and then what you should be doing is going an inch wide and a mile deep so that you really understand the people that you're working with. Um, when you do that, you would be able to understand who your ideal client is, which I know a lot of people struggle with. A lot of it is found out by thinking about who you would actually work for if you were working for free. They're the sort of people that you really enjoy the company of. They're the, the people who make life easy, they understand what you do, they cooperate, um, they're willing to put the work in, and most importantly they're willing to pay because some of the people that you might want to work with um, can't afford what you do, so you have to know that there's a market for it. And if there's a conflict, then you can always do some voluntary work, but it's really important when you pick your ta target audience that you pick a market that can support you. And then you would do that and find them by really spending time on who it is you want to work with, going into the different attributes, really narrowing it down, figuring out then what their biggest problem is, and thinking of the solution that you can provide that would deliver more than the fictitious thousand pounds that we're charging at the moment. But again, if you have a problem with selling, if you know that the value that you're giving is actually worth double that, you're a lot more confident when you're presenting your offer because you know that you're going to solve the problem and they're going to be getting it. And it's almost like getting a bargain because you know you're going to help them. And then you can think about how you can package that and deliver it. Uh, and again, if you use your website, you can include things like membership sites, you can have Facebook support groups that will add extra value. There's all sorts of things you can do with your website that you cannot do in the offline world. And it means that you can be doing this for people who are in Scotland, it could be in the wilds of Wales, providing they've got internet and it's not raining, and it could be in England. Okay. Has anybody heard of the Marmite effect? Yeah. And that's basically what you have to have. You have to have the Marmite effect. You want lots of these colourful people. You don't want to touch those with a barge pot. But you can't avoid them if you haven't identified them. Because the thing is, if it is that you're beige and you're attracting people from all over, and you are unlucky enough to have 10 people, even if they're paying you a thousand pounds each, if you're with the wrong 10, your life will seem incredibly long. And <laughs> Friday will have you on your hands and knees Calling, looking for the wine bottle, or well, maybe that's just it. Okay, so with the website itself, uh, you need to be careful that you do in fact have a website and not just a brochure. A website is proactive. There is the means to have a two-way conversation. There, are, there is the means to collect people's details um, and to focus on the needs of the client. 
and actually to provide value because you can have as many pages, as many articles, as many offers in terms of um, free gifts that you want. If your website is more of a brochure, then it's basically uh, reactive where there's a one-way communication. You are telling people things. You are mentioning what you sell. You are telling them what it is you do. You are telling them all about you. Um, it's up to the client to contact you. So your phone number's there, but that's basically it. So they need to reach out to you or leave. That's basically the only options that they have. Um, and you would often just list the services that you've got for sale. So you're not building a relationship. You're not uh, taking the time for to allow them to get to know you or for you to get to know them. It's basically just a, a one-stop thing. So I have a website because some people say that it's that's not necessary these days. You've got LinkedIn, you've got your profile there, you've got Twitter, um, YouTube, uh, SlideShare. I mean, you literally can be everywhere, and all of them are important. But the difference with a website is that you actually control the contents and you control the comments. Now, if you are on LinkedIn, you are going to play by their rules and you are limited to what you can say and what you can promote. Um, you're able to showcase your expertise and your authority because you can put down exactly what it is you want people to know about you. You can add images, you can add your credentials, you can explain where you're from. You can share using social media and you can share to all the different platforms at will. You can control the testimonials and the referrals. You can accelerate the no like, and trust factor by adding video, audio, and images. And I couldn't agree more with what Danny said about the, the video. I've got some stats which are a little bit different, but they're all saying video, video, video. And the mobile sites, in, in of a short space of time, I think, we're basically going to have websites that are like mini TV shows, where you'll have a video on every page. Because if you think of someone trying to access your information on a small tablet or a phone, they're not going to scroll down and read all the text. So you're going to need video. And it can actually be animated. It can be talking over slideshows. Um, talking head would be wonderful. And then the most important thing is that you can actually collect the email addresses. And then you can follow up and keep in touch. And that really is the main function of the website, is to collect the details of the people who've shown an interest and turned up so that you can follow up. And I say follow up, not hound, not chase, <laughs> not rugby tackle to the ground to sell your things, but follow up and keep in touch and build a relationship. So what you would do is you would use your website to be the starting place of all your articles, um, your PR, your blogs, your tweets, everything should begin life and live in your, uh, on your website. And then you send them out. And when they go out onto Facebook or LinkedIn, YouTube, you actually direct them back to your website, always sort of bringing people home, as opposed to things starting out there and staying out there. And whether they come back to you or not, then it's entirely up to them. You lose a lot of people. Now, if you have a high street office, you probably would love to have one of these. Apologies to the ladies, because I couldn't find a male version of this. They all had hammers and nails and tools and things. But your receptionist would actually be the one to meet people and greet them and say, how are you? Thank you for coming. Um, you know, can I take your name and address? He's out at the moment. He'll get back to you. So that's basically what you want to have on your website. What you don't want is for them to come to something which is like this. There's no personal photograph. There's no video. Um, there's a big wall of text which reads like a CV. There's nothing which is personal. There's nothing to convince somebody that they know the person behind the website whatsoever. And everybody who lands on a website is actually not really interested in you or me. Everybody who goes to a website wants to know, can this person help me? Um, what can they do for me? And if they land there, they, they go away none the wiser. Other problems are that you get the equivalent of this which would be like you coming to this event and having myself, Danny and Chris in different corners of the room all talking at the same time. There are so many services on offer. People have got a lot of experience so they do so many things and they try to put absolutely everything on the front page of the website. So people don't know who to listen to or which part to read first, they don't know where to go next. They're bombarded with information and the end result is they will leave because they're just confused. 
they don't know what to do, there's no major message, no one call to action, and so the technical term is they will bounce. When they bounce, they fall. So basically you have eight seconds to keep someone's attention when they land on your site. That's how long uh, it's been tested. Within that eight seconds, they're going to glance over everything you've got, make a decision about whether they're in the right place, and if they're not, they go. <laughs> you have to make use of above the fold. That means the space on the screen, which you see immediately without having to scroll down. That's where you need the compelling headline, that's where you need the images, that's where you need the benefits, always about the benefits. They don't really care how you're going to do it, they'd like to know what it is you're going to do and how they're going to benefit by the end of it. You need to show that you understand the problem. You need to show that you've got the solution, that they're in the right place. And you need to be able to collect the email address. That's really, really important. So, this basically would be the anatomy of a good page. You need your attention-grabbing headline. You need a video or an image at the very least but if you have a video that's really great and explain a video is known to actually convert far more people than anything else um, and by the way if you actually send an email which has the word video in the title it is actually I think 74 percent more likely to be opened or something like that it's really high rates people are happy to watch videos they, they find them far more riveting than text you need to have the opt-in gift. As Chris said, you can put your articles together into a helpful PDF. You are giving this in exchange for the email address, but what you're doing is you're giving good value. You're not, you're not giving them bits of information. You're giving them a lot of information. And you can't think that you're giving away too much, um, because the truth is you can actually get information from the internet anyway. What you are doing is you're putting it into a smaller amount of, um, uh, in one place so that they can access it easily and you're doing so so that they get an idea of what you personally can do for them. You can do that quite simply by using Aweb or MailChimp and you must have a call to action. They need to know what is it you want them to do next, okay? Because then, again, it takes away confusion. When you've got the email address, what you do is you follow up and you educate, you provide value, and you keep in touch. And you do the, that far more than you try to promote. You actually try and use an 80-20 rule so that you are giving 80% of value and promoting maybe 20% of the time. And then quickly, if you have a lot of skills and a lot of services and they are very diverse, you really want to think about, at the very least, giving every service its own page. But if not, if they're completely different, you have to think of another website. Because if the message is too far apart and too confusing, you actually damage your brand by having them on the, um, the same page. And then quickly with the above page, as Danny said, it's about story. So don't, it's not a CV, don't run off all your qualifications. Try to blend what it is you do, your interests, your values, into a story that explains to people why it is you do what you do so that they actually feel like they know you, and that is what's going to actually get them to a point where they want to do business with you. Um, and then, yes, oh, oh so sorry. <laughs> Try to create special landing pages for specific purposes, which thank you pages, welcome pages, if you keep the message clear. And that basically is an example of the sort of page you could put together. It's got a compelling headline, it's got a video or an image, contact details, opt-in gift, capture form, different boxes to give different options to go somewhere else, almost like directing to another office, and a call to action. And you can control your benefits and list your benefits and testimonials. Oops. And that was just to say thank you. I hope you found it useful. And uh, I hope I haven't taken too much over the time. So, oh, just a little bit, yes. I'll hand you back to Chris, who's going to wrap it all up. Thank you very, very much.